Hi there, Vicky. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for joining me on that show with Mahi, the edition of How to Keep Show Fit. How, yeah. how, how do you do it? How do you do it personally as an MD or a pianist? Well, I'm pretty lucky, I reckon, because A, I like just playing for my own pleasure, which helps you kind of keep show fit, I think. And also I work with lots of great singers who uh, force me to learn <laughs> hard accompaniments. So uh, I even now, even with this whole situation where we're stuck at home, you know, I'm still putting down lots of tracks and things for people. Yep. And I'm, having, I'm really kind of enjoying having the time to just explore new repertoire and just play through stuff just kind of for fun, really. Yeah it's kind of a bit of a gift to have all this time so um if you're if you know a show is coming up basically is your sort of method is just get on the piano and you just play and get and start getting the muscle memory into how things are played yeah i yeah i guess so i mean i think one of the differences now is i don't really have a score to work on you know like it's so much easier when you know what you're doing next and you've got a score there to kind of work through. So, I mean, when we're working through a, like a new score for a show, I'll play it lots, but I'll also I'll play the vocal parts and really work out what's going on there. And I'll play through some of the orchestra bits and kind of work out what's going on there. And sometimes I'll fake conduct it like a dork in your room, you know? And <laughs> so I sort of do a whole lot of different types of practice to kind of get it into your body. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this stage, I'm really just enjoying, like, actually, I'm not even playing show stuff so much. I'm playing all sorts of stuff. I'm sort of going back and playing some classical stuff and trying to be a bit cool every now and then and play some groove <laughs> stuff and, you know, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess if there's other um, pianists out there, um, MDs, uh, assistant MDs or anybody in that field that are going, you know, how what can I keep doing in, in my time now to sort of get to where you, you've been? Like for, I mean, as long as I've known you, you've been in the industry. Um, yeah, so, you know, that, and that's just been over like 10 years. So how did you get there and stay in that top level, the top 5%? Um, I guess to keep playing. I mean, I think I feel um, like I've been lucky because all I've ever really wanted to do is just like sit at the piano and play songs for myself. <laughs> and particularly songs for show. So, like, just being an extraordinarily dorky child just sort of continues to pay off for me in all sorts of ways. Yeah. So, um, I think that, and you know, I think um, uh, uh, singers sometimes, my gripe with some of the singers I work with, and you're certainly not one of them, is they don't know enough songs. They don't just like sing songs for themselves and learn songs for themselves, even if they might not be great audition songs, or yeah, even if they be a role that they suit, there's still nothing wrong with learning them and singing them for fun and making music for fun. And I actually think, you know, being excellent at what you do, that's actually a really big part of it. You know, yeah, I think- right. that's, that's great advice. So I guess that going into sort of that singing, singer's world, um, how, I mean, it's easy for someone in a show to kind of fall in that pattern of just doing the show material and just going, well, you know what? I'm turning up, I'm singing every day, I'm kind of fine. Have, yeah. have you seen some examples of that not really working for people? Absolutely. And then, you know, like an audition will pop up and they'll be like, just bring us a pop song. And I'll have people come and go, I, I don't know any pop songs. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know any pop songs? <laughs> like, they're easy to learn. They're fun to learn. You've just got to have enough time to kind of play around, find one in your key, find one that suits. Like, I've invented a thing that we're doing over this kind of pandemic break called Song Club. And basically, I put 20 songs in a Dropbox with everything you need to learn them and say, go and learn as many as you can. So some of them will be great. Some of them you'll be singing years from now. Some of them you'll just sing this week and then go, you know what, that song's not for me. Yeah. And that's all fine. I just feel like maybe we, um, we're sometimes a little focused on what shows are coming. And I'm the worst, you know, offender of like, well, this is coming and this is coming, you know. So yeah. make sure you've got this, you know, you've got something in the style of Frozen, you've got something in the style of Hamilton and, you know, like... Yeah, on we yeah. go. And um, I actually... In a, like we sort of have to do that once we're on the treadmill or there's too much work. But it's also just great to have some songs that you just love to sing that sit beautifully on you and are the type of song you would just kind of like put here to sing. 
And um, I think that's really part of using this time is just part of remembering all that kind of music that we just like to make, you know? Yeah. Do yeah. Going back to that moment where, and especially as a singer where, you know, you had the hairbrush in hand and you were just singing songs because they were the fun part and you're doing daggy dancing and kind of getting around and singing with somebody else or, yeah, that's, I mean, that's such a great, um, that's such a great reminder to, to do that and to feel the love. I mean, I just got goosebumps thinking about that because, you know, we all have that one song that we love or there is something about just singing a song for the sake of it. <laughs> that's right. And we've got time to do it. Like, it's, it's awesome. We should be doing it. Or, you know, having it, you know, going down one of those YouTube rabbit holes and digging through all that new music theatre repertoire and some of it is absolute rubbish and in there are some absolute gems or some songs that just like you in particular can just make fly you know you go you know what this yeah. song really speaks to me and I know what this song wants me to how this song wants me to sing it yep. and um you know and having the time to kind of play around and get some new gems in your bag of tricks for sure so go, just going back to that song club how do people yep. get this all this <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, you can just find me on Facebook. But um, if you go to gleeclubsinging.com, which is my choir business, so I've just sort of popped it in there just because I had the website already. Yes. So gleeclubsinging.com, there's a little song club heading and there's just a little sign-up form. And then what I do is at the beginning of each month, I send you the Dropbox. And then every Tuesday night we have a Zoom catcher. And if you want to sing a song, if you've worked on one, you'd like to try it out in front of a very friendly, supportive audience you sing it or oh. you can uh, yeah just you know sing it because you've got the backing tracks there so you play the backing tracks at your end and sing away and um if you don't want to do that you don't have to you can just learn the songs by yourself or take them to your vocal coach or you know yeah. I always say you're the boss of you like <laughs> just however you want to use it but I thought this is just such a great chance for people to get to have that time to learn more songs to yeah, play around absolutely. with you. And, Push them um, together, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, and also, um, I've called upon you many times in the past to record uh, shows that are coming up, and I've gone, um, I need this song, Vicky, can you put it down? Uh, is that attached to your website as well, or is that something yeah, you just need to do? Email me through the website, but you're right, that is such a good thing to do in this time. And, like, I don't charge very much money for that because I quite enjoy... Um, I quite enjoy playing them in, to be honest. Like, it's kind of fun. So... Um, yeah, and I just do a nice recording and then you've got the songs to learn with a note bash and an accompaniment. And again, that's just, you know, I reckon there's so many people who come for a coach to prepare for an audition and then they say, oh, we ran out of time. Next time I really want to put down these songs that I've been meaning to learn for ages. And then the yeah. next one comes and there's another audition that's like pressing and we don't get to those songs again. So maybe this is the time for everyone to really do that you know yeah absolutely so i guess for yourself um what i've sort of gathered from this conversation is that really um any pianist that's out there or any any musician really is just get there and play but play things that are out of your comfort zone play things that you love uh, play things that yes you might have a show coming up but i think the essence was have fun and bring back the joy in music um whether that's singers or musicians right I reckon what, I mean, if you want to look at this situation through rose colored glasses, like we, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, I just don't quite have time for that. And <laughs> it's nice for once in my life, actually have time for that. It's really cool. So, you know, that's the upside to being trapped in our houses. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to uh, put those links to your website on uh, this video so people can check it out. Um, and also is your email address okay as well for backing track or just to, yep. We'll do it all. Let's look, make sure we you up. But, um, <laughs> that's everything um, for today. Thank you so much, Vicky, for being a part of that show with Mahi. What a pleasure. See ya. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephen May, and you are with Stephen and David talking about how to stay show fit. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, um, I'm always excited to sort of speak to different people within the industry because, I mean, speaking to a bunch of actors is quite boring, uh, but just speaking to a musical director that's working in the industry, uh, that has, been, has done numerous shows, how do you, if you want to answer the question, how do you stay show fit or how can you suggest for other people to stay show fit? 
I feel like, uh, I mean, this year is so unusual that we've never experienced this before. We never will again, we hope. Um, but like all of us, I've had times when I've been out of work. And those are the times when you are you're sort of thinking, are you going to lose it or whatever? The obvious thing for me is to play the piano. Um, I find every time that I'm out of work, uh, I listen to music a lot more. And I'm always listening to the vocals because I, I love great singing and I love great diction. And um, I get hooked on certain recordings of certain songs. And I'm always listening for placement and that kind of stuff. Because then when I'm working, I can apply that into my work. Um, and I don't know about you, but, but when you're doing a show at times a week, you are... Uh, you, don't maybe listen to that much music at home or on Mormon I was playing the piano every night so I didn't play as much in my leisure time yeah but now that that's gone um that that adjustment is taking time but it's coming back slowly well it is, has come back um and uh after you asked me this question yesterday I went to my piano and I played some Beethoven and played some other stuff and then I was like, oh gosh, my, my harmony fitness. And I've actually played the Sounds of Silence in all 12 keys to make sure I could change those. And I was like, oh good, it's still there. Yeah, it's good. But um, I think it's just that, that adjusting of being out of work, um, adjusting what you do uh, as music in your life. Yeah, so for me, that's, that's how, I, how it occurs to me. Yeah. But this year, different. like other times, I've been out of work and then I've had a gig coming up in three months or two months. At the minute, you know, it looks pretty, pretty grim. So uh, this is a different year for all of us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I guess with musicians or being a musical director, sometimes you're not necessarily at the piano, but you're, you're watching and you are observing. How do you yeah. best prepare for um, that new show that's coming so that you are, you know, on an audition panel and knowing what to look out for. I mean, do you sit down with the MD from America or the UK and you discuss in detail how it all works? Yeah, I mean, each show is different for, for, from the Jersey Boys to the Wicked's to the Mormons, whatever. Um, and they're all very, very specific, as you know. And so you do have to do a lot of research with the supervisor from overseas. And um, that can be done on email and all sorts of ways to prepare. Um, but the actual preparation of listening to a singer and reacting to how the singer is performing i think that's that's ongoing because you're if, every time i listen to a, a recording for example at the minute i'm kind of late to the party but i'm stuck on hamilton and um it's the diction is so clear and the recording is so well made it's been a lot of money in that and um uh i'm actually as a musical director thinking wow l listen to the placement of the singers and the the way that they speak uh, on the front of the, of the face and all that stuff. Uh, Americans do that anyway, because they they just do. Yes. But um, yeah, so as far as preparation for the next gig is concerned, it's sort of all that stuff that I'm doing with my ears is always happening and always ab absorbing and preparing me for the next um, challenge, yeah. Yeah, well, I think you nailed it on the head there or gave, gave us some pretty free advice there to performers as well, is to really work on placement, work on diction, listen to other yeah. music other than what you're doing uh, and start yeah. working those muscles. And in this time now, we have the opportunity. I spoke to Vicky Jacobs, another, um, you know, one of friends of ours that, and she was saying, you know, sing things that you would never necessarily perform, but, you know, just try and push yourself in different areas and then go and sing a song that you absolutely love because we got to bring back yeah. the joy in this. Instead of it being a monotonous, we're working eight shows a week, bringing back the love. Yeah. I think she's, she's right completely. And um, I would also say it's a really, really good chance for a performer to have a routine, maybe Monday to Friday, where you have half an hour, you have your warm me up app on, and you, you might do a little 10 or 15 minute warm up, quite a long one, longer than normal, because you've got time. Yeah. And then just ha hammer out three songs you love with the karaoke backing tracks off YouTube or whatever, with, whether it's, you know, Define Gravity, No Good Deed, and Wizard and I, or whatever, yeah. and then do a warm down, but I think the trap to fall in for, for some performers is to sing at home and they're sort of half singing. And as you full know, when you're playing a lead role or even in the ensemble, you have to sing at full voice all night. Yes. So if you had the, the, um, the show fitness that that requires is so unique. And now, we, now that we don't have the shows to do that work in, if you just do five days a week of, you know, just 12 minutes, three songs or maybe four, of songs you love and songs you might not normally get to do from a role that might be 
whatever yes. and um, but you've always wanted to do it and but but just sing it properly and in full voice and you don't have to sing for two hours in full voice but just so it's fun and i also say monday to friday because you know what that feeling is when you go to work on friday night and all the workers are in the pubs yeah. for their weekend and you're like oh i've got five shows to do oh my god <laughs> I think this is our chance to make that routine a Monday to Friday thing, make the Friday 5 p.m. your drinks time because that won't be happening when you're working. And then Saturday, Sunday, relax, do something else. But um, make the, the, sh the show fitness work Monday to Friday as a routine. Uh, I think being people who do what we do, we love routines. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, David, for joining me on that show with Mahi. And I think a lot of people are going to walk away with this with a, a lot of information. So thank you very much. Great. My pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you.